Hello, this is Dr. Tim Sandal, and I'm really pleased to be back with you with another microbiology themed video. And in this video, we're going to have a brief look at some of the sources of fungi in pharmaceutical processing environments. And this video will last for around sort of 10 minutes. OK, so let's have a look at manufacturing environments and some of the sources where we might get fungal contamination. Now, the reason for focusing on fungal contamination is because it signals a greater control breakdown than we might be inferring from bacterial um, hotspots. So how do fungi relate to pharmaceutical processing and other healthcare environments? Well, clean rooms and controlled areas, as we know, are the basic structure of the sector. And this is because products are prepared within them. And like all forms of microbial, microbial contamination, fungi can be present in clean rooms and they present a product risk. And this risk is associated with, with air, with water, personnel, equipment and materials. And arguably, the biggest risk is from air because fungal spores are easily dispersed into the clean room via many routes. So we need to look at some of the aspects of manufacturing within clean rooms in more detail. So these are some of the risk areas that can be drawn from various industry surveys. So if we consider clean room design and operations, then a number of aspects of clean room design can release fungi should they be present or weaknesses can allow fungi to be transferred in or improper environmental conditions can provide places for fungi to grow. So some of our weaker areas include door kickback plates, bags made from natural materials, faulty incubators, boxes, trolley wheels which are often a neglected area for disinfection, loose ceiling tiles, damaged flooring, vibrations from construction work that might deposit spores into the airstream, faulty light fixtures, faulty HVAC systems, especially if we have weaknesses around the seals, around HEPA filters. And then we have the overall control of items that will be transferred into clean rooms. So let's focus a little bit more on buildings as a contamination source. So if we consider uh, buildings in a bit more detail, then where we have poorly ventilated areas, areas with insufficient air changes per hour or poor air distribution, maybe the degree of turbulent flow within the clean room is not ideal, then this can help fungal spores to remain within the area. Other design features include ridges or cracks in the finishes and these are areas where fungi can enter or grow and this risk increases with um, older legacy facilities. We also have weaknesses with the uh, inner parts, the design features uh, supporting the clean room because plaster and paint can be nutritional sources. And this is a fundamental reason why you'd never have painted surfaces or walls within the actual clean room. Fungi can utilize paint very well and particularly matte finishes are um, optimal medium for, for a lot of fungi. Now there are paints where you can add a fungostat such as uh, pentachlorophenol but generally the addition of fungi stats never proves overly effective. Now there are certain types of fungi that are particularly found in relation to the as-built environment and again, literature indicates that these are Cladosporium 
aspergillus and penicillium as the optimal species. Okay, let's change tact and let's have a look at materials as contamination sources. So this is all about the uh, incoming materials into the facility. So we have incoming raw materials and here the fungal flora most likely to be associated with these materials are those from plant origin. So the material sources are things like gums and agars and starches and they can have an abundance of species if they're not from reputable sources of Cladosporium, Ortonaria, Fusarium. Packaging materials and the risk here relates to the composition of the material and how it's stored. And our key risk factors here are particularly with like buildup of dust, uh, cardboard, so cardboard is always a big no for going into the clean room, and also methods of transport. And here we may have a particular concern with penicillium and with aspergillus. And there's also equipment and consumables that can present risks as well. Filters or straining bags, particularly those made from natural materials, paper sources, canvas sources can be particularly vulnerable. And this is because fungi will often utilise um, cellulose and impair the, the fibres. And here, um, cladosporium in particular is a, uh, is a risk. Now, there is a classic study that I'd like to refer to. And that's an old study but it's still a very robust study. And this was a study go back to 2007 and it was from the Journal of Occupational Hygiene and it was a study of a variety of different HVAC systems. So HVAC is heating, ventilation and air conditioning. And here researchers went round and did a number of um, tape lifts to identify uh, the presence or absence of fungi or how many fungi might be present and also did some swabbing and in particular they found lots of cladosporium cladosporium being a melanized filamentous fungus uh, that appears as like a, a black mold and this was found in relative high abundance in uh, over 80 percent of the samples taken in blower wheel fan blades in duct work and in uh, cooling coil fins so we have uh, particular vulnerabilities, uh, particularly with um, how HVAC systems are maintained. And if they have design weaknesses, then a proportion of those fungi could end up into the facility. Now, with actual manufacturing environments, um, what we've looked at so far, a lot of it is potential. This is now more about conditions that are conducive to fungal growth. So we could call these influencing factors that might increase or decrease the likelihood of fungi and with the list on the slide it could be that it's one factor or it could well be a combination of factors that will lead to the higher chance of fungal growth and these factors include areas that are wet or damp so we know if areas are wet or damp there's a greater chance of fungal growth um, where we get alterations to temperature or humidity where we have weaknesses with personnel behaviour and hygiene, where we have ineffective cleaning and disinfection. We may have a greater build-up of risks with seasonality certain times of the year might present a greater challenge. So uh, the ending of summer and entering into autumn or fall is the uh, often a more vulnerable time. And then there are certain parts of the world that are going to be more vulnerable. So we've got geographical environment as well and also um, going back to ventilation air change rates air movements uh, inlet extracts those types of things that i've spoken about earlier and then we have people so with uh, people this is to do with fungi that are either resident to the body or fungi that are transient and the likelihood or otherwise of releasing microbial carrying particles some of which these might be fungi and there's information we can draw from the human microbiome project as well and some of the genotypic profiling that um, 
took place in relation to that. And that gave us some clues about the weaker areas of the human body in relation to uh, the fungal microbiome. And we know that the Human Microbiome Project has indicated that there's considerable diversity of species, variations between different locations on the body, variations between individuals, and that our microbiome changes over time. But there are different parts of the body that will have different populations and different numbers of um, microorganisms. So we do have some particular uh, weak areas that we need to consider. And if we look at the model of the human body, then in particular, we have some concerns with areas like the, the feet, for example. So here, when we kind of look in a little bit more detail from some of the uh, uh, work that's taken place, um, we have the greatest concentration of fungi on the heel. We have a high concentration of fungi on the feet. We also have some other fungi associated with armpits and particularly areas where you get uh, drier skin as well on, on, on the body. There's also a high concentration of fungi associated with toenails and between toe webs. And some of the most common species are uh, Mausesia, that's the well-known dandruff fang, uh, fungus, Penicillium, Aspergillus, Trichophyton and Trichosporin and Fusarium. So you'll note that um, Cladosporium is not commonly associated with the human body. That's very much our indoor, inbuilt environmental fungus. There are others that are found in higher concentration within the uh, human body itself. And with feet, we do have to be very careful um, with things like changing socks. So uh, wearing clean room socks is important, but equally, um, we really want to be pulling those socks over our outdoor socks rather than taking those off because um, that can be a uh, contamination source. And that then leads to overall gowning and, and, and some of the measures that we can take within the clean room. Um, and this comes down to appreciating that there are a lot of fungi that are resident or transient to skin. So we need to wear appropriate clothing, practice good aseptic technique, observe air flows and to use barrier technology. Um, so these are all really important um, principles. Um, so this is what I wanted to cover in this presentation. Uh, so just have a, like a set a brief look at um, different fungal sources and the different risks that different types of fungi um, promote and can be influenced by. And in particular, I guess we could summarize uh, damp conditions, damaged aging facilities, where we have exposure to plasterboard and with the transfer and transport of materials into the facility. Okay, so I've been Dr. Tim Sandal and this was a video about sources of fungal contamination in pharmaceutical and healthcare facilities. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you and goodbye.